Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. We've got an exciting episode of Security Matters for you today. Uh, we're kicking off the new year with a little bit of IoT, um, a little bit on the edge of our industry and a little place where the industry is obviously heading to take advantage of these new technologies that are available. And uh, Holly Hunt is with us from IntelliSight. I know uh, some of you may know her, but I'm going to give her a chance to sort of, uh, she's got a lot of enthusiasm for her background and how it brought her to where she is today. So I want to let her give you as much of that as she's like, Holly, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you um, taking the time out and uh, thank Ken Mills over there for letting you have some time off to jump on the show. I know he works you hard. You know, he's one of those kind of guys. Oh, it's hard not to work uh, and follow that <laughs> passion that Ken has. So um, it doesn't feel like work at all, to be honest with you. Awesome. That's the best kind of job to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, and, and just with kind of thank you for asking about me sharing a little bit about my background, because that's really where this enthusiasm for where I get to really help and create harmony in the market today. But I've been in the security industry for, gosh, a good um, 20 plus years. We'll just leave it at that for, you know, dating myself. But I started in the market in photographic film and badging supplies, and then it turned into really an access control play. And um, I had to actually be an installer of my own technology to be able to go out and sell it. So I would go out and to meet folks like yourself and say, hey, I have the latest, greatest, you know, whiz bang access control solution for you. And it's right when they became really just key replacement systems, you know, these plastic badges. And um, so just using that foundation and leveraging that life experience where I started with Keyscan into really working in the alarm space with Bosch gave me this ability to work deeply in the market and the passion around what are the outcomes, what are we driving, what are we looking at? And that naturally leads to this uh, engagement and relationship of where we've merged in the market into IoT. And I was sitting in a, in a, a California Alarm Association conference, and they have some of the greatest, you know, thought leaders that really dug in. And DeMarco gave us a state of the union and what's happening. And it was the oh, rings coming in and stealing the market. And it was really the first IoT innovative kind of conversation play. And being a girl whose job was out there to throw a bunch of awesome Bosch detectors, that kind of scared me and it woke mm. me up to where the market was going. And I then really like pulled back and I, and I got with some coaches and leaders in my life and a group built around resiliency and looking at the global X event and it's the global X network. And these group of global researchers had just started on a six year project. And this was six years ago, identifying the platform value of future economies. And I learned from them, IOT platform value and ecosystems are all in play. And without all of that together, we don't have IOT today. So hmm. that's why I'm excited where I'm at at an IOT company is I get to really leverage that rich experience throughout my career, you know, from Bosch to working with Cognify and understanding what a PSIM is. And I like to call it platform 1.0. Um, and what we didn't have back in PSIM and really in that space is really that compute and process at the edge, the ability to make that rich decision making and enablement. And now that we have like partners like NVIDIA and massive like processing at the edge, we're really getting to leverage IoT like we never saw it before in the security industry, because we need a lot to push that video, you know, piece out there. So we wanted to talk today, Andrew, about chopping up the, the market and IoT. And I always like to bring my friends along and figure out how do we enable everybody to go out and capture opportunity in the space. At IntelliSight, what we are doing is scaling the market of this inclusive enablement. And it's really leaning in with integration teams like yourself and realizing that we can't just be one product set anymore. I had a customer say, help me find the platform of the future. And I had to go back to them and say, it isn't one. It's really about mm -hmm. an ecosystem and how are you going to build that? And that's what I get excited about, you know, what we're doing here. And it's the, the breadth of it. I think um, some people, they see ring. That was a great example, right? So they see that and go, oh, IOT device. So it's that simple. Some device talking to the cloud mm -hmm. and, and the guys that are sending that signal are getting all my information. Maybe they think about that. Maybe they don't. Um, but it's, it's far broader when you look at smart cities and you look at the applications that you guys are talking about with IntelliSight. There's 
a variety of the, the one of the better examples I've seen are some of the stuff that's happened in New Orleans, right? They've done a, a really good job of taking uh, just just surveillance technologies, but applying it to flooding areas, things like that. So they can alert those folks and get the plumbers yeah. up there. So there's there's a there's the information flow within the ecosystem. What's valuable to that end user? And that, let's talk a little bit about this because because you guys are bringing a hardware and a software approach to this, as well as the monitoring approach. So you've kind of got um, our is IntelliSight's vision that the customers should be able to sort of pick and choose the pieces they can handle and then rely on you folks for some of the other pieces that maybe they don't have infrastructure or skills to deal with. Think, um, talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate you bringing that up because it's really an interesting model and it's one following more in the traditional SaaS market than what we're accustomed to in the, mm -hmm. you know, security integration CapEx market, if you want to say. And customers um, are becoming much more intelligent with the decision-making process. And I love, and I'm going to give a shout out to Andrew Elvish with Genetech at their Connect event last year, the last public event I got to do, had a great slide from Gartner on why people buy. And you'll get a sale 30% of the time if you bring, you know, the customer the multitude of solutions. And you'll help close a deal 50% of the time if you tell the customer what to do. But you'll actually get the solution and 80% close rate if you make sense. And that's what we're doing is we're making sense of the whole ecosystem and to say, well, do you have just a software? Yeah, we do. But we also recognize it's important to be good stewards of investments we've made in the, in the architecture. So what I love about IntelliSight is we may have this product called IntelliSense, where we make sense of everything. What do we need? What do we need to add to the pot in the ecosystem? You already have a, a platform out there leveraging Milestone. Well, great, let's help enable that further. You already have a standard set in Access or Bosch. How can we manage or enable that in these additional use cases that are outside of surveillance? You know, and also big part of that ecosystem play that we never brought in before is the compute and process and how do you get it to the cloud and that transmit. So we work deeply with the Verizon team, who's one of our big partners, and then just architecture partners like a WWT in smart cities or Dell and helping them to bring that all together. So we have the ability, we own a, a product called Deep Logic, which is AI and all of this doesn't make sense unless you can aggregate the sense making. So we can bring all parts of the pie together, but we look at what do you already have? You know, if in your IT stack, you're already paying for something around containerization with Kubernetes or with Snort and, you know, edge device protection, we're going to enable that, you know, with our professional pro services teams to help do that. But what we're going to do is we're not going to come at that piecem approach where you have to like put on this overarching big part of the platform, we're gonna really containerize it to use cases. For example, in cities in Northern California, we actually have a district attorney who hired us to put applications out there because they had a mad greaser. And this guy didn't wanna pay for recycling his grease. So he would roll mm. up his car in different parts of the city. I can't imagine what that van smells like. He'd throw the grease out, and then the wow. city cleanup was costing them millions of dollars in illegal dumping. So wow. through LPR and placing this technology in the city, we're actually able to go and help litigate and help process that. So that's a piece of surveillance. But imagine in the city architecture, you've placed that surveillance out there to support this use case of keeping the community safe and clean. We have Verizon already out there. What if we added a leveraged piece of a gateway for um, you know, the digital divide so that the people in the community during school hours, they'd have a broadband broadcast of ability to get on. So that's what I love is how do we piece the ecosystem together with all of the right things down to like, what kind of metal are they running on in the data center? How are they pulling it? How does the IT come together? You know, how does park and recs, how does, you know, law enforcement, how does everybody come in? And mm. for me, the passion is around this part of how do you fund more opportunities for being able to get the right type of solutions. And you have a passion that you've talked about on the island of helping those that are in the homeless situation. How do we enable the homeless to self-advocate in more ways? How do you give them access? And one of the things that I love about our logo is that you look at it, the bottom base is the focus lens of a camera, but the rest of it is what's coming out. And that's really the community aspect of how do we turn this into more of an open, transparent ecosystem. And that's the key in ecosystem. The word is trust. And that's yeah. 
you know, I, we only have 30 minutes. I'm talking 100 miles an hour, so just. No, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, it is a, it's, it is a big topic. So it's, it's, it's deserving of its time. This um, let's let's take a piece of this out. We you, you touched briefly on the idea of the the surveillance camera doing part of a job. I don't think that a lot of the audience understands that there's a lot more information in that stream of video, right? The, the everything that happened in the background. I may be looking for a person, but or someone with a blue jacket, whatever it may be. That's the the old school stuff we've always done. Well, what about all the other, the weather that's shown in that camera, the yep. traffic that's flowing through that intersection, all Maybe. that other information is where it's super valuable and where we can use um, this sort of data gathering capacities and then bring that to someone who it makes sense to someone. The traffic engineer may need to know, he may see that his lighting, you know, the red lights aren't turning at the right time right. of day when they should. So there's things like that, that I think that a lot of people don't understand how much information is there. And that, that's a big piece of what I was reading about what you folks are doing is you're helping them to aggregate that. Yeah. Have, the inter, have the engagements been um, where you have to kind of teach the customer what's possible or do they come to you and say, could you do this? And then you guys just kind of show them the way it could be done. You know, I find it interesting on this side of the world when the customer isn't from the foundation of security where yeah. that's where we grew up, right? The, the culture, the thought thinking is different. When you come from um, process flow management and IT, the art of possible, which is how do you protect it? So I love this side because the, you do get a lot of in the idea sessions when we're really looking at use cases and what keeps them up at night, how can we solve this problem? And it mm. in, in lies the data. One of, again, a throw to the Global X team that I learned is urban development is really where the monies are going to be at because mm -hmm. communities need to be able to drive um, a happy, pleasant, and productive place where we live and work. And the way in which that we structured our urban, you know, sprawls doesn't serve us any longer. So I mm -hmm. thought it was really intriguing with an intelligent traffic group in Northern California where they're actually looking at point-to-point -point destinations and they're zip coding it so they can't it's mm. all blocking so you don't know it's this person but you can see their zip code orientation or origination to where they're going to and now they're deciding based on velocity and speed and different things wow you know what we need more lanes there less bikes we see all bike traffic going this way and so that's what's pretty cool is that they're using that technology to really map out how to put in and where to put in parks and family areas and how to develop, you know, the technology in the space. So that's really cool that we're driving data. Another part is um, neighborhood watches. They're taking it back by using dual streams mm. on the technology. So it's not we're watching you. A lot of cities are saying, hey, we want our neighborhoods to own their own, you know, spaces and places and yeah. have that transparency. And they better know that that's a nefarious character. Or that's just Uncle Joe sitting on the bench, you know? Yeah. And so that's you know a big part of what I'm seeing happen in, in what we're doing with technology and the value that we're providing to a lot of folks. And when we come back, we'll talk about Vision Zero. And I wanna talk about how that's enabling a lot of about 300 cities around the US and their, their vision for the future in this space. Okay, awesome. We'll be back with Vision Zero and Holly Hunt. You guys stick around out there. We're gonna take a one minute break, pay some bills and we'll see you shortly. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters. We're talking with Holly Hunt and going through sort of some of the stuff that IntelliSight's bringing to the market. You know, um, IoT is uh, not new, 
but it's evolved, it's maturing, and the, the solution sets that are starting to roll out are viable, um, they're reliable, and they're helping solve problems. So Holly, uh, you wanted to talk about uh, one of your favorites. Well, it comes down to intelligent traffic systems and knowing the flow of a community is really the secret sauce. It's what everybody needs to know so that we can better plan and prepare for the future. And so I wanted to share an initiative called Vision Zero and you can um, Google that, it's, it's all over. And it's about, I think 300 cities across the US are taking on this mission and this goal to have zero pedestrian fatalities zero emissions and zero traffic by 2030. How do you get there? Well, first we have to know what there is, right? And that's where in the intelligent traffic systems, you began to see that we're actually tapping into some of those light cameras that make the lights go back and forth. And we're beginning to really look at the patterns of traffic. Um, there's an amazing use case on our website. It's almost like such a heartfelt documentary because the city of Sacramento was really trying to overcome this mission, you know, mm -hmm. impossible. And as we're out there filming, an actual sheriff car almost cuts us off because it shows you oh, wow. like the initiative. And so a lot of what I think is gonna be necessary in IoT is really around public awareness and around really helping to educate the importance of being, having better flow and having more pleasant experiences as we move through our communities and, and safety and, you know, smarts around it. So that is a really cool thing that they're doing. And I encourage people to look up Vision Zero because there's a lot of opportunity to help support it. And I love how Vision Zero brings the architecture of access and broadband because that's a big thing we're missing in our communities for inclusion is allowing everybody to have access to data and information. And the digital divide is the other big mission that I see is amazing where we're going to make sure um, you know, that we're providing the ability for everybody to uh, go to work and go to school remotely or, you know, wherever they're at. Yeah, I was going to say, we have a, we have a lot of pedestrian, um, pedestrian sit out here uh, crossing. The, they've, they've essentially allowed left crosswalks where there's not at an intersection, right? So it's out in the middle of a major road. It's left over because that used to be a trail, like a path, right? And so these people need to transit there. And um, uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, this is our Kapuna. So these are 75 and older. They don't have a digital device in their hand that we could send them an alert to like, don't cross the road right now, right? They don't, they don't know. So this, um, this, you know, to your earlier point about acknowledging what the ecosystem has, how do we alert all the parties? How to make this valuable to the, because the city definitely doesn't want to have pedestrian incidents, right? That's bad for tourism and, and many other, plus it's terrible. But, you know, when we, we really need that, end user to be a part of the solution, but they're not enabled, right? That's another problem, right? So we need, we need to be able to have some, some other way to alert them that it is just not safe to cross the road right now. And right. Uh, the sign, the signage hasn't worked, the sounder hasn't worked. So, um, you know, maybe that's, um, you know, there's just some, there's more work we can do there. And so Vision Zero is such a great thing. And I, I don't know if Honolulu is a part of it, but I'm definitely going to take that to the city because it's a, it's something that we need here as well. Right. And a big part of that is all the sense making, Andrew. And that's what I love about IntelliSight. A big part of our solution set is our deep vision AI. And that it's within really taking all of those data streams and aggregating it and finding out all the patterns that we get the sense making, you know? Sure. And that's a big part of it. You'd asked earlier about, you know, what is IntelliSight? You know, for myself, one of the aha moments of being hardware centric and growing up and selling all of this, you know, intrusion video access control out there. How do I take everything I sold before and help people not say, oh, that's no good, buy this now. It's like, what do I add on to it? Mm -hmm. And our ability in the IoT space with our universal IoT gateway, and that's our little black box, we can bring in so many amazing sensor sets. Like in school, they can have vape in it. You know, that's a big thing that's hard to do in compliance standards. Um, but in that same set, you know, you could have some thermal detection in it and be able to enable your COVID compliance standards. Um, and, and so it's, I love that piece of it, but that doesn't stop there because that's really where we need to go to the ability to go to the cloud and the gateway. So we have the whole service mm -hmm. that will take you there. But most of all, we have the ability to crunch and make sense at the edge, um, you know, with our compute process and it, having that AI and intelligence at the edge is really what enables those IoT devices. And then having 
traditional, um, you know, IP or analog devices to go to this little black box. And I call it a magic maker because I have smarter guys than me that make all the magic, but it's what I've always needed to get mm. past my present. And that's what I love about what we're doing at IntelliSight is it's really creating harmony and taking the ecosystem so much further. I had um, talked with some folks about this before, and I, I don't know if it's possible yet or if it's part of what you folks are doing, but are we, let's just take the example of trying to, to search a room for a person. And let's say it's a room of 10 people. And let's say we could do that with what we, with the compute on the edge device. Mm -hmm. Now let's just say we fill that room with 10,000 people and we still need to do that. Can we dynamically take that search? Cause we say now we need the power of cloud to search that, that many people. Mm -hmm. Can we do that dynamically today? Can I say, hey, run this on the edge until the edge is overwhelmed with compute need and then dynamically flow right. that up to the cloud? I think it's, you can then, you know, if you have the right edge to sure. compute that piece, right? Because that's where it's all at, is what kind of GPU do you have at the edge? So if we're looking at a stadium or, you know, like a mass amount of people type application, you definitely have to do that right now on the prem. But what you can is identify the BOLO, send it up to the cloud instantaneously if you have that right, you know, edge compute process happening. And if you have the right team and the right ecosystem to help you leverage that, a lot of cities, they already have that metal. We're already leveraging mm. what they have at the edge. They don't even you know, realize it because not all the stakeholders were sharing what they had to bring it together. So that's mm -hmm. the exciting is you do need to have some guts. And that's what's, you know, of what we do that's really different with our UIG is we have a lot of guts at the edge to push that. Now, if you're going to be in that multitude of counting the depth that you're looking at, you're going to need a little bit more guts to put that kind of a solution together. But absolutely, the art of possible is all in what the limitations of the architecture and how to push it. Um, sure. and we're also our sister company, uh, BroadSky, is a broadband cloud provider, which I'm just learning about. But the cloud is really cloudy, right? I love someone <laughs> told me that. My um, dear friend, Bree Manis. Um, you know, she said yesterday, like the cloud gets pretty cloudy. And I think maybe even uh, Phil said that somebody said it, but it was just really dawned on me how great we have the ability to enable folks to manage that. Because one of the things that when I started doing research for today, I came across an incredible website on IoT and it's all of, you know, the great uh, technology companies out there making sense of this. And one of the things that they said right here is that um, is, uh, the key things to getting started and measuring success is how enabled is your ecosystem. I mean, all of it and going to the cloud gets really challenging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they kind of outline the four steps of IoT success. And it's really to understand the issues that you need to address. And that's sense making, right? Of helping people sure. not be limited and what keeps you up at night. Um, and then the step two is consider the type of architecture. I mean, what do you have to drive it on? And that's really what has stopped people mm -hmm. in the past is they didn't understand fully how to bring it all together and the depth of the bench you need, not only architecture, but also in architects, right, to get us there. And then, you know, the IoT platform, it's not one. And again, it's an ecosystem depending on mm -hmm. the overall business enterprise or community and what they're trying to pull together and protect. And step four is, really looking at how the platform supports new applications in the future. And I wanna talk about the future for a second. The IoT computer vision industry is projected in 2023 to be $48 billion. Wow. That means every security customer out there, everyone in our industry, if you've ever sold a camera, let's make it smarter. If you have multitude of access control platforms and you can't really get everyone into a single pane of glass, how do we leverage the right alarm signal sensors so that we're not ignoring 95% of it, you mm -hmm. know, what's going on? So, I mean, that's what I think is pretty interesting is the sense making, you know, that we're getting out of IoT. And then just some of the stats that I wanted to share with you is 55% of all data is, you know, forecasted to be generated in mm. IoT by 2025, 55%. So how much of your pictures when you went on vacation this week, did you take, they're great, there's like 300 of them now and you pay them in <laughs> cloud storage and never look at them again? Yeah, exactly. Because we don't have AI at the edge looking at our camera, at our pictures for us telling us what's smart to save, what's not, what's gonna be a future weak signal, key indicator, something like that. 
So that's what I think is interesting is that what we're going to be able to do in sense making security industry is no longer security. It's sense making and flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what sure. I call harmony, right? And it's not, you know, my friend who said, you know, I was saying, what do I wear today? She said, well, be you. And I'm like, is this too soft? And she said, why does security have to be hard? Ah, nice. I like that. You know, we're, we're, we're all about protecting uh, yeah. lives and property, right? It's, it's, yes. it's, it started as guards and guns, right? We know that we all came out of law enforcement and military, but it's long since been something else long yeah. since been about that that connection with people and what keeps them safe and what makes them feel safe to engage with their community to gauge with this ecosystem that we're talking yeah. about so you know how do we how do we enable that form sort of uh all around them without them having to having to engage with it when we just protect them that's the softer side of that that i think is important to to recognize because nobody nobody really likes to run up against the locked door right you know that's always right. been a problem <laughs> absolutely Absolutely. The one where the one where there's no intercom with no help and you're just standing there like, what do I do next? Right. That's that's when security failed. That's that's really what it does. And that's where I'm really intrigued. The future of what mass com platforms look like and how we're all going to be sharing Slack channels or Teams channels. And, you know, I have a vision where our UIG will get people there. So why well, go out and, you know, invest in even deeper platforms, use the tools the enterprise already have. You already paid for Teams, you already paid for Slack or whatever that internal mm -hmm piece is let us drive the right data there for you sure and that's what i want to be about being transparent and that's how you get your stakeholders to lean in and say yeah that makes sense that helps me to have a more pleasant experience you know here and i think that's what we're all about driving in iot is how do we make sense and make life more pleasant yeah so we've got a minute or so left i'll let you close this out what's your uh you could give us your vision of the future or whatever whatever you'd like well, I really like to share a little bit about, you know, IntelliSight and knowing that we have such um, a large ecosystem here. We grew up, um, you know, from an integration company and then identified that really the value is how we bring it all together. And we're now coming to the market and really building ecosystems and channels. And we really can drive additional value to what you're already delivering for your customers um, out there. So if you have a contract vehicle, and you want to add more sense to your security, I would love for you to reach out to us and figure out how we can help bring that value to you because that's what I get excited about is not, I don't, we need to, we don't need no more stinking cameras, right? Let's, let's go figure out the ones that we have. A lot of customers out yeah. there say to me, some of these huge, you know, customers, you know, a big social media company says, gosh, we have 14,000 cameras and 20 some thousand doors of access control. Leadership says they want those things to actually work for us, you know, make more sense than just, you know, helping people out. So that's what I'm excited about is that we really lean in and we have a holistic approach of enabling however we can provide you value. We have a platform, we have deep logics, we have AI, we have intelligence, we have design, we have a piece of hardware. But what comes down to it is we really need a healthy ecosystem to go enable all the customers. So as the organization has been built a direct to market, we're really looking at how do we enable the ecosystem and how do we build in channel strategies and partners in there. So if you um, are there looking you to make more sense out there, you know, let us know how we can help enable your success um, in driving some additional values with your customers. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. Sense making, right? And tell us in, in Telesite, check it out. Add some sense making to your security. Talk to your customers about it because this is the conversations you're going to be having now and in the future. Holly, I really appreciate you spending some time with us today and uh, and, and sharing your excitement with us. I, I think you're you're right in a great spot, and uh, we'll just have to keep checking in uh, like on an annual basis on how this is going because it's going to continue to get. Um, well, I just think more well, more and more leveraged. I think it would be fun to have a use case call where we can say and show you like what people are doing in the world to make sense. It's it's mind blowing what we're uh, mitigating around risk, and some of it's kind of funny. All right. Thanks so much. All right, everybody. Take care out there. Aloha. Aloha.